from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello everyone, I'm News Channel 5's political analyst Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Statewide and legislative candidates in Tennessee still run under party labels. But what does that mean today as the role of parties continues to evolve and change? Here to discuss that issue and share their thoughts about the upcoming November elections in Tennessee are the two major party chairs in our state, Scott Gold of the Tennessee Republican Party and Mary Mancini of the Tennessee Democratic Party. Thank you both for joining us on the show. Let me start out the conversation by saying I particularly appreciate both of you coming. We've had some of your predecessors who didn't want to appear at least together on this show. So I appreciate you both being what? willing to come have your conversations together. Of course. Well, I, I, I want to get into it. why that was, but that's what happened. <laughs> First question for both of you to respond to, what is the role of the state party in today's politics? You don't seem to raise money for candidates. You don't really identify candidates as much as you used to in the day. You're not the focus of the, of the election campaigns. Outside groups, frankly, are. Scott? Well, it's changed a little bit. You know, as the, the makeup of Tennessee, when, you, when, when you're in the minority, you do do a lot of that recruiting. You do do a lot of the raising of money when you become the majority. Um, a lot of the candidates come to you uh, that are that are interested in you running. more selecting you know, recruit uh, we have we don't really even have to recruit as many candidates we've got 74 in the uh, 74 house members uh, we had you know obviously this year is going to be a, a really big year turnover in the state house but in the 20 or so seats that we had where members retired from the state house I mean we had competitive primaries for all of them I mean there were people coming out of the woodwork that you know want to have that chance so you know we provide the structure for them to run we've I mean, we've had I know we've had stories all throughout the year of, of what our uh, qualifications are to be in the Republican Party to run for those offices so we provide that structure and then ultimately the big part is we provide the party infrastructure that hopefully will take our nominees to success in November. Mary, how is it on the Democratic side, yeah. particularly since politics and parties are so, or, and our politics is so much more tribal these days? How do you keep coalitions together? It's, it's always been difficult in a lot of parties, but now that everything's so tribal, if you're different on issues, well, you, you, you break apart. Well, so so here's the thing. It's really about values, right? And, and all Democrats uh, share the same values, which is that you know, we, we want to work so that everyone has the opportunity for a better life, no matter who you are, what you look like, or where you live, right? So with that as our underlying um, value statement, uh, we can move forward together in this election cycle. Plus, you know, this, this we're, I think it's different for the party during each cycle. Um, you know, this cycle, well, we are working very closely with the, the State House Caucus and the, the Senate Caucus, and of course, we have a coordinated campaign. Um, we meet on a regular basis, and we, we move forward together. You do this, you do this, you do this. Um, we had a large role in, court, in uh, candidate recruitment back in the, uh, before the deadline, so you know, raising money is a big thing, giving money to candidates, giving help to candidates. We have a, a lot of new candidates this, this election cycle um, that are looking to us to kind of guide them, so yeah, I would say it's, it's the role changes with each election each election cycle. Scott, is the Republican Party still the grand old party or as I think Bob Corker talked about it, it's more of a cult and it's part of the party of Donald Trump alone? Party of one? Well, the president is the leader of our party, but I mean, there are many but different maybe more voices. so than past presidents have been, even in other parties. Yeah, I, I mean, he he plays. Uh, I mean, obviously, we've seen it this week, where where a tweet from him can change the outcome of a primary election. He is uh, his approval uh, ratings uh, inside the Republican Party are through the roof. We like everything that he's trying to accomplish. We've got great news this week on NAFTA. We've got uh, Brett Kavanaugh that's been nominated. That those hearings start next week. Republicans are generally pretty pleased about it. That being said, we've got a lot of different voices in the Republican Party all the way through and, and you know, as Mary would tell you, it takes all kinds to to bring a party together. So. Mary, Donald Trump has certainly stirred up people across the country, both for him and against him. That's been true here in Tennessee, but don't your candidates have to talk about more than just being against Donald Trump? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, the reality is, is that things are not working in Washington or in Tennessee, and uh, we have an opportunity. Well, Scott says the well, economy is great, and the Supreme well, Court's going to be a, a, a nominee's going to get through. Yeah, so I right? travel around the state a lot. Our candidates go out in their districts, and the economy is not working for everyone. Uh, the health care is not working for everyone. We have 11 rural hospitals that's closed. Uh, uh, the the uh, education system is not working for everyone. So 
What we have to do this election cycle is our candidates need to, because we have this incredible opportunity where voters are listening because they want change, our candidates are going to go out and they're going to talk to voters and going to make the case for voting for Democrats this election cycle. But Mary, you had maybe a quarter million more people vote in the Republican primary in August than they did in the Democratic primary. Aren't you going to have to get some of those people over on your side in November? That sounds like a pretty big thing to overcome to be able to win in, in the fall. It's not. I, I mean, it's not. It, no, it's not. I I mean, here's the thing. Again, um, you know, voters who vote in the primary elections, uh, you know, they're not the entire voting populace, right? They're sort of the very, very far left and the very, very far right. We've got an entire swath of voters in the middle who we, again, will go out and make our case to. We've got incredible t uh, candidates up and down the ticket. And um, we will go out and make the case to them. Again, there's this real hunger for change in this state and in Washington. And our candidates are meeting with voters and making that case. Scott, assuming that there may not be much change in the state legislature, Republicans may keep most of their majority assuming that they're not going to lose any congressional seats, still, still say seven to two in our delegation. Why is it the Democrats appear to be competitive in both the statewide races, both the governor's race and the Senate race? They, they do appear in most of the polling to be pretty competitive. Why is that when they're not, don't appear to be competitive on the lower district levels? Well, I think it's number one, we, we just, as, as we, you know, it's Labor Day weekend, so this is the traditional time when people start paying attention to the fall campaigns. Um, as people get into it and we start seeing what the consequences are, uh, think about where we were in the presidential race two years ago. Uh, Hillary Clinton was on her way. The drapes were being measured uh, at this time two years ago, and so all of a sudden, you know, Donald Trump wins. So when voters begin, you know, kids are in school, schedules have been set, football's kicked off, then people start paying attention to say, hey, what's important? Is the state going in the right direction? Is Donald Trump headed in the right direction? Do I agree with him? And, that's what I think will happen. Mary, the uh, Supreme Court nomination of Brett Kavanaugh was brought up uh, just a couple minutes ago. The, uh, the uh, uh, Judiciary Committee hearings begin on Tuesday uh, of next week. Um, is that really going to be a big defining issue down in Tennessee? It looks like the Republicans are going to pick up an additional vote with the replacement of the late John McCain out of Arizona. That would give the Republicans 51 if they don't lose any votes. And it, I don't see any Republicans defecting at this point. There are a few Democrats that might still. So are the Democrats still going to make this a draw a line in the sand issue? Uh, so the reality is, is that when you look at what's happening in Washington, uh, when you look at what's happening on the ground in Tennessee, how the economy is not working for everyone, how health care is not working for everyone, how you know the education system is not working for everyone, the real focus of our candidates is going to be on the issues that matter in Tennessee. We have an opioid crisis that is decimating families and communities that has not been addressed. And so you know, again, 11 rural hospital ha uh, hospitals have closed. Medicaid expansion has not happened. So we have these incredible, uh, you know, issues here in Tennessee that's really what we are focused, laser focused on because things have not been addressed. Things have f fallen by the wayside for so many Tennesseans. Mary Mancini, the chairman of the Democratic Party in Tennessee, and Scott Golden, the her counterpart in the Republican Party, the chairman of the state Republican Party, are our guests. We're talking about politics and about the upcoming November elections. Back for more conversation after this break.